Welcome to chapter 7, which is about dummy variables. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how to construct in Excel and use qualitative independent variables. In this instance, qualitative independent variables, or we call them dummy variables, have two or more levels. For example, yes or no, on or off, male or female, and you're going to code them as 0 or 1. If you don't have any other options for dummy variables, one of the options get a zero and the other one gets a one. Regression intercepts are different if the variable is statistically significant. It assumes equal slopes for the other variables. We'll talk in a different presentation how to change the slopes for the dummy variables. And the number of dummy variables needed is the number of categories minus one. So now we need to talk about how to convert words into numbers. We need a way to turn male, female, pool, no pool, in state, out of state, married, divorced, single into numbers. If you try to put those words into your regression, your regression obviously isn't going to run. The number of new columns that should be added into Excel or whatever program you're using is the number of outcomes for the variable minus one. For example, there are two outcomes for male, female, therefore there should be one new column. There are three outcomes for married, divorced, single, therefore there should be two new columns. And it's important to note that you want to name the column for the outcome that you set to one, and then every time you see that word, put in a one in that cell, and then everything else gets a zero. I guess what I'm trying to say is naming the column gender or pool status does not help the person who's looking at the regression or the data try to figure out what is one and what is zero. If you call it what you call the one, for example, one is in state, zero is out of state, therefore the column should be named in state, that gives the person looking at regression information as to what the one actually means. We're going to go back to our we rate dogs example. Uh, while I was collecting the data, I noticed that golden retrievers, which is the kind of dog we have, uh, they obtain more likes than other dogs. And therefore, when I was collecting the data, I decided to keep track of whether or not the dog was a golden or not. We're going to assume that a dog, or dog can either be a golden retriever or it's not. There are two options, so we should have one new column. I created a new column called golden in Excel, and every time the dog was a golden, it received a 1 and a 0 if it wasn't a golden. Down here you can see that my first four observations were not goldens because they got a 0, and then my uh, fifth observation was a golden. Here is a graph of the number of likes, which is our dependent variable, versus whether the dog was a golden or not. You can see that these kind of dummy variable graphs are not that informative. We could think about putting a line between these things. That's not actually what's going to happen. We're about to see what happens in a regression analysis next. Uh, but for example, in your multiple linear regression project, you don't necessarily have to include these graphs against dummy variables because you can't really see that much is happening. We can see that uh, there are some dogs that aren't goldens that get quite a few likes, but on average, the dogs who get more likes than the other dogs are goldens versus not goldens. Okay, the first thing that we might want to think about doing is just including uh, golden as our only independent variable. That's what I did first. So golden equals one if the dog is a golden, zero if the dog is not a golden. The number of likes equals beta naught, which is our intercept, plus beta 1 golden plus our error term. If the dog is not a golden, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a 0 for this golden, and we have 0 times beta 1, which is 0. We're left with likes equals beta naught plus epsilon. And if the dog is a golden, this gets a 1. Therefore, we get beta naught plus beta 1 times 1 plus epsilon, or we're left with the number of likes equals beta naught plus beta 1. This is just a difference in means example. If you only have intercepts in your, in your regression equation, it's just, they're just means. 
Here's the regression output. I only put in uh, the coefficient estimates uh, just to save space. You can go back to my Excel file if you want to see the rest, or you can run the regression yourself. If the dog is not a golden, then the equation only is that our likes hat equals the intercept, 99,981.82. The average number of likes a dog gets if they're not a golden is almost, looks like 100,000. Whereas if the dog is a golden, then golden is a one, and I'll put a one in here, and I'll get the intercept plus this number right here, and I'll get 144,000. So the average number of likes for a non-golden is 99,981, 82 likes, I guess, and the number of likes for a golden is 144,000. The coefficient on golden is how many additional likes a golden retriever gets over a non-golden retriever in this model specification. And we can see that this is statistically significant at a 10% level because 0.07 is obviously less than 0.1, but not statistically significant at a 5% level. In economics, we would call this being marginally statistically significant. We typically don't, we're not that interested in differences in means. We don't need regression analysis to be able to do this, although it is actually nice that you get this p-value test. Uh, but what we really care about is uh, fitting a line through data. Let's try that now. So we're going to have uh, our golden variable, and then we're going to add in the number of comments. And let's see what's going to happen to our regression equation. So in general, we have likes equals beta naught plus beta one times golden plus beta two times number of comments plus epsilon. If the dog is not a golden, then golden gets zero. And the equation is beta naught plus beta two comments. And if the dog is a golden, golden gets one. We have a new intercept, which is beta naught plus beta one, and then our slope is beta two comments plus epsilon. I ran this regression, so we can see that we have our intercept, we have golden, and then we have comments. And so if the dog is not a golden, the equation is likes hat equals 31,576.08 plus 132.44 times comments. And then the, if the dog is a golden, we have the intercept right here plus one times this, which is next to golden because it's a one because the dog is a golden, plus 132.44. Therefore, we get a new intercept. So the intercept without the dog, with the dog being not a golden is 31,546. The intercept if the dog is a golden is 66,743 essentially. Therefore, putting the golden into the equation like this or any dummy variable, it just changes the intercept. It doesn't change the slope. Note that the slope is the same between the same the specifications. And how we would interpret this coefficient on goldens is we would say, on average, relative to being a non-golden, golden retrievers get 35,180, essentially seven more likes than our omitted category, which is non-golden. We can see that this they're all statistically significant, even at a 1% level. Um, and so the slope stays the same between goldens and not goldens. So I just had to go down below and reread what I had written and made sure that I covered all information I wanted to on this slide. Here is a picture of what's happening. The reason that I'm so specific about the intercept just being changed is I took I don't know, I think a couple of quarters of econometrics, I'm pretty embarrassed about this, but I did not realize that this is what the dummy variable did, is that it only changed the intercept and not the slope. I had absolutely no idea this was what's happening, so I'm trying to be as specific for you guys as possible. I like this errant beta hat here. I'm just gonna leave it, it'll be my friend. It's like, where's Waldo? It's just like, where's beta hat? Okay, so here are two equations we can see that between being a golden and not a golden, they have different intercepts, so they start out at different places, but they're still constrained to have the same slopes. I'm gonna have another presentation, how to change the slopes between goldens and not goldens, um, but right now, all we know how to do is change the intercepts. So the same slopes between being a golden and being not being a golden, but different intercepts. This is what it looks like.
One question that you may ask is, what if you made the opposite decision as I did when coding your data? I decided to put one for a golden and zero otherwise. What if instead we put a one if the dog is not a golden and zero if the dog is a golden? I'm calling this very exciting category no golden. And um, our new equation is likes equals beta naught plus beta one no golden plus epsilon. The dog is a golden, then non-golden is zero. And uh, therefore this is our new equation. And if the dog is not a golden, then gold, uh, then this non-golden is one. Sorry, this should say non-golden. And the equation is, is this. Okay, and then um, I also did it with comments just to see. Here's what we notice. That um, the intercept, if the dog is a golden, is 66,743 essentially. And it, the intercept if the dog is not a golden is 31,546. So I'm going to go back a couple of slides. Remember 66,742 and 31,546. Here we go. 31,546, 66,742. You can see that the results overall are the same regardless of how you decide to code your data, which is comforting because it would be very worrisome if I made one choice how to code my data, which one to put one and which one to put zero, you made the opposite choice and our results were totally bonkers and different. This is not what ended up happening. We ended up with the same overall results. The interpretation of no golden would be, on average, if the dog is not a golden, they get 35,197 fewer likes than the dog if the dog is a golden, which is our omitted category. And again, still statistically significant, etc. cetera. Um, and so it doesn't matter which one you code as a zero, which one is you, as you code as a one, uh, the overall interpretation is the same. The sign changes here, but otherwise the same. And then again, the slope is the same between the two specifications, 132.44. Does it matter which value is one and which is zero? No, it doesn't. The variable that the estimate is relative to changes. For example, here, the, the thing that no golden is relative to is being a golden, whereas here, the golden is relative to not being a golden, but, once you analyze the equation, the estimates remain the same. We can see we got the same intercepts, we got the same slope. You get the same outcome regardless of which variable you choose to make a one and which one you choose to make a zero. What if we put both golden and non-golden into our regression equation? If you sum up golden, the golden column plus the non-golden column, you're gonna get a column of ones. Now this column of ones is going to be perfectly collinear with the intercept, which is already a column of ones. The intuition is that once you have the golden in the equation, adding the no golden doesn't offer any additional information. You don't have new information because we've already exacerbated or exhausted the amount of information associated with being a golden. That's like the same, similar to having the area of a house in feet and the area of a house in yards. Once you have it in feet, having it in yards, does not offer you any additional information. Golden and non-golden are what we call perfectly multicollinear. If you ask Excel for the correlation coefficient, in this case, it's actually gonna be negative one, which is perfect negative correlation. In this case, we're gonna fall into the dummy variable trap, is that's what it's called. And we're also violating assumption MLR3, multiple linear regression, assumption three, where it says that we shouldn't have we, there's no perfect multicollinearity. And you can see the implications of this is Excel gets mad at us. Basically, I'm pointing out that it's like num, ah, exclamation point, you don't do this. It's telling us that something is very, very wrong here. If you get results that look like this, you just think to yourself, you first have to do a head slap, then you have to think to yourself, oh my goodness, I fell into the dummy variable trap. And then all you have to do, it's an easy fix, is just estimate the model again, dropping one of these two variables, and then it'll be back here and happy like it was before. So this is what we call the dummy variable trap. Not a big deal if you fall into it, but if you do, it is a big deal if you don't dig yourself out of it.
So again, the thing that you want to do if you're here is just drop one of these two variables from your regression analysis and re-estimate the model. What if you have more than two options? The example that I had earlier I'm going to continue on with. We have a variable that's about marital status and it's mar married, divorce, and single. There are three categories. So because we have three categories, if we included all three, we'd fall back into the STEMI variable trap, so we can only include two of them. And so it's your choice which ones you want to include. Uh, please note that your estimates and your statistical significance test will be relative to the omitted category. So if we want to figure out whether things are different than being single, then we want to omit single and have married equals one if the person is married and zero if divorce or single. So zero if the other two categories. And then divorce similarly is one if the person's divorced and zero if married or single. Single is the omitted category. So all my coefficient estimates for married and divorced are relative to my omitted category. And again, calling these variables marital status is not informative. You need to call your variable what the one is in your column. So the estimate on married is relative to being single and the estimate on divorced is relative to being single. The interpretation of dummy variables is different than the interpretation of the slopes as we've had before in this class. Usually with the typical quantitative variables, the interpretation of the ith independent variable is that on average, holding all other variables constant, the independent variable goes up by one unit or down by, uh, sorry, if the independent variable goes up by one unit, then y goes up or down by beta i units. Because a dummy variable only has two options, it doesn't make sense to say that if the dummy variable goes up by one unit. It can only have two options. It's binary. It's a dummy variable. It's either zero or one. The interpretation of the dummy variable is relative to the omitted category. So on average, holding all over the all of the other variables constant relative to the omitted category, the dummy variable is either on average more or less than that omitted category. Do not talk about the dummy variable going up by one unit. It just doesn't make any sense and it makes the reader or the person listening to you think you don't know anything about regression analysis, so please don't do it. Interpreting variables correctly is a must-have skill in life and in this class. Uh, so be very clear that you understand how to interpret dummy variables. Last but not least, years should be turned into dummy variables. What do I mean by this? If you have a sample that involves two or more years, you should put in a dummy variable for the later years. For example, let's assume you have data on football teams for 2018, 2019, and 2020. I understand that 2018, 2019, and 2020 are numbers, but they aren't meaningful numbers. You should have a dummy variable. You should have a dummy variable for 2019. It's So Excel doesn't get super mad at you, but it makes sense to put some kind of, I usually put year or year like this in front of this number, so it won't read it in as a number is all I'm saying here. So year 19 equals one if the year is 2019 and zero if it's 2018 or 2020. In a dummy variable for 2020, call it year 2020 equals one if the year is 2020 and zero if the year is 2018 or 2019. And then the estimates for year 2019 are relative to year 2018. And the estimates for year 2020 are relative to year 2018. Again, our omitted category. And in this case, it's typical to omit the the year that's furthest to go, and then put in dummy variables for the more recent years. Okay, thank you guys for listening. I hope this presentation helped you understand dummy variables.